update. My name is Curtis Nall. I'm proud to be your superintendent of schools. Well, we've made it to May 14th. When you look back uh, all the way back to spring break, the, this date seems so far away, and yet here we are. Um, so proud of everything that's going on in our community. Um, and, and there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering out there, but uh, as you know, those of you that have joined us in our Facebook Lives, that's not what we try to focus on uh, here. As we talk about the future of education, we talk about the, the status of our great school district, we really want to focus on the positive. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone out there that's making a difference in our community. Um, I think what we've proven uh, through our conversations and what we've seen in our community is that kindness and positivity and hope, they all matter. They, they matter to everyone. They help us to have that positive outlook. They help us get through today and get to tomorrow. And what I've seen and witnessed throughout our great community is the best of people coming forward during this hard time. Uh, we've talked about volunteering at the food bank or donating money. We've talked about leaving kindness rocks in your neighborhood. And I've heard so many people uh, that aren't even attached to the school district in any way talk about finding those rocks in their neighborhood and the difference that it made. And it really tied them in uh, to us as a Conroe ISD family. And so that, that's been great. Uh, we've seen wonderful work done um, by all of the nonprofits in our, in our great county, from the Food Bank, Interfaith, um, the Community Assistance Center, Children's Books on Wheels, you name it. There are people out there making a difference every day. And, and included in that is our great staff in Conroe ISD. Our child nutrition department is fastly approaching 750,000 meals distributed uh, through our curbside delivery. So thank you to all of our child nutrition workers and thank you to everybody that, that volunteers to come and help hand out those meals every day. That's truly life-sustaining work and we're so proud of that and we appreciate it all so much. And we have heroes all throughout uh, our district and tonight we wanna celebrate them. And uh, we have a new virtual choir performance. And uh, when we first put this together and decided that we were going to um, debut it on Facebook Live, uh, the initial thought was, well, well, we'll show it at the end. That'll be what we go out with. Well, it's just too good. It's too good to share at the end. Um, it truly is a celebration of not only our teachers and students and, and those people that are working within Conroe ISD, but it's a celebration for our community, about our community. And so we're gonna show it right here at the beginning. I think it's the perfect stage to help put us all in a great place as we continue through our Facebook Live. So this will be our Conroe ISD virtual choir. It's high school choir students joined by our choir instructors. Please enjoy.
Wow. If that wasn't the greatest three minutes of your day, I don't know what could be. Uh, truly uh, touching and emotional talent on display, but also just those pictures uh, really paint the picture for what's gone on in our great community uh, over the last few months. And so we, we always want to stop and remember that even though it's hard, we are so fortunate to live where we do and to live around these great people that we live with that want to reach out and want to help and to know that we all have that umbrella and that safety net is truly a beautiful thing. Special thanks to Andrew Stewart uh, and our communications team for putting that together. Uh, Dr. Bob Horton, our Director of Fine Arts, uh, just unbelievable. And uh, you know, we celebrate the arts in Conroe ISD. We, we know it's important for the development of all children. Uh, it's also important for the soul. And you really can feel that in that video. We'll be posting that video as a standalone video today, um, right after the Facebook Live. So I know many of you will want to see it again. You'll want to share it and uh, it will be up on all of our social media. Uh, at the conclusion of tonight's Facebook Live. So hopefully you'll, you'll get a chance to share that and uh, let the world see um, what a beautiful place this is. Uh, well, we, we talked about being at May 14th, and here we are, two weeks left in the school year. Um, our last day officially of school is May 28th, and just like um, a normal school year, we begin to wrap up some of our academic activities and begin to focus on end-of-year activities, and you're going to notice that in your schools and you'll start to see more of the celebrations of the end of the school year and they'll look differently. Um, you know, I know that a lot of elementaries, for example, may have a fourth grade clap out where they celebrate those fourth graders. I've seen some plans where that's gonna be a drive-through ceremony and it'll still be a special way and, and in, in some ways, maybe it's more special. They'll be the only fourth grade class to have ever experienced that. Or, and, and so um, make the most out of all of these different experiences. We've talked a few weeks back about schools will be reaching out to you about coming up to pick up items that your child may have left at school. I've, I've seen our schools working really hard to set up plans to do that safely so that you can come in and you can be safe or they'll bring it out to, to the curb. And if you have not received information from your campus, you'll be getting it very soon. Um, just keep, keep on the lookout for that. But we'll make sure all those things happen. And if you don't feel safe, if you're not comfortable quite yet and getting out into public and you don't feel good about coming up to the school, we'll put those items to, to the side and you can pick them up later in the summer um, when you feel comfortable doing so. So we're, we're not asking you to, to, to get out if you're not feeling comfortable, but we just wanna have it available. I know that there are some items that, that the students may have at school that you really need. And so we wanna make those available to you. Well, um, the big monumental moment for every school year is graduation. We've been talking about graduation um, really for months and we've been hopeful that we could have graduation and. Um, my emotions with graduation have gone up and down as I've seen these possibilities of thinking, oh, we're going to get to do it. It's going to be, you know, uh, modified, but we're going to get to have it. To I've, I've had those moments where I thought there is just no way that we're going to be able to pull a graduation off. And so tonight, what I really want to do is talk you through uh, our process so that you can understand exactly how we um, have synthesized information about graduation and what's gone into our decision-making process. And I know for those of you out there that don't have a senior, you may think, I don't, I don't know if this even applies to me and maybe I'll tune out. What I would encourage you here is uh, I hope that you'll stay with us because I want you to, to see how we synthesize information and how we have chosen to attack and make plans. And while it may not be 100% applicable to next school year, I do think it gives insight into you know, how we function and what's important to us and how we will function moving forward. So we go all the way back to our original graduation plans. We historically graduate at the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion for our, our largest high schools, Sam Houston State University for Caney Creek and Hawk High School graduates at Conroe High in the auditorium. That's been our plan to do that in May. That was our original plan. And then you'll remember that we had a plan B that we had put out. And that, those were July dates um, for the pavilion for the big schools. And then once Sam Houston canceled, we had also uh, had the plan to move Caney Creek to the pavilion. So we had been moving forward. And part of what we talked about through this process is we were waiting on guidance from the state. We knew that guidance was coming. We didn't know when we would get it. They just kept telling us, you're going to get guidance. Don't get too far ahead of yourself because we're going to we're going to bring rules to you to tell you exactly what uh, a graduation can look like. And that guidance finally came last week. 
So it was last Tuesday, so a week ago on Tuesday, really about an hour or two before we went to our Facebook Live for our Salute to Education, when the governor came out and spoke, he spoke about graduations, and then we were uh, then able to access all of the rules associated with graduations. And I want to share those rules with you tonight so that you can understand exactly the parameters that we're expected to follow uh, in, as we try to build a graduation ceremony for our seniors. So we'll go ahead and start, and you can see under Executive Order GA21, and I won't read all of these to you, but I, I just want you to have an idea of exactly what the expectations are on us as a school district. First of all, there are four different options for graduations. You can have a virtual ceremony. That would involve maybe graduates sending in pictures and we would create a video and play that video online, you know, perhaps at the, sp the specified time of the original graduation. That is allowed. We could have hybrid ceremonies where students may come up and they would be pictured or filmed individually receiving their diplomas at the school and then we would put all those together to create that video. Vehicle ceremonies, meaning drive-through ceremonies or perhaps at a drive-in somewhere uh, where we keep everyone socially distant in a car or outdoor in-person ceremonies. And you can see they could take place no earlier than June 1. So as soon as we saw this slide, we knew that our May graduation dates were canceled. So that, you know, that was clear from the get-go. Furthermore, now if you're going to have an outdoor ceremony, these are the rules that we must follow. We have to limit the total number of people that would be at the ceremony. That includes students, families, and staff. We have to cap it to a manageable level that will maximize social distancing. So that's not an option for us. That is a requirement for us from the state if we are going to have an in-person ceremony. Uh, participating students and attending family members must be screened uh, as for a health screening. Now that does not involve any type of medical check. It involves a questionnaire or conversation uh, to make sure that um, you haven't been exposed and you're not experiencing symptoms at the time. Uh, we cannot have rehearsal, so it's a one-shot deal. We need graduates, we can only bring everybody together one time um, to have the ceremony. We must maintain six feet or more spacing between all students on the field and also ensure social distancing uh, within the, the stadium itself or the seating itself. And to do that, uh, we should assign seating. It should not be general admission seating. It should be assigned seating so that you can ensure uh, that social distancing. Hand sanitizer and hand washing stations must be at all venue entrances and throughout uh, the venue. Must limit the number of our school employees that would be in attendance to only those that are logistically needed uh, to support the ceremony. Diplomas that may be handed out uh, they can only be handed out if the person handing them to the student is, are, is wearing gloves. Uh, so that, that's a change for us. And then uh, face masks are recommended. This once again is from the governor. They recommend face masks not only for students but also for uh, attendees. We must have school employees stationed throughout the, the venue to ensure compliance of all social distancing and limit congregation so we can't we can't have groups of people coming together um, robust communication plan must be in place we need to communicate to students and families that we have to uh, control both the way people enter the stadium where and how they sit and how they exit the stadium so that at all times we ensure social distancing and we don't have large gatherings uh, so that, those are the rules that came to us from the governor once again last Tuesday. And uh, immediately we went to work on that to look at what were our options. We've been in constant communication with the pavilion and they were waiting for those same rules just like we were. And so we really got to work on Wednesday looking at, at all of our options that were out there. Uh, one option was that hybrid type ceremony. Um, Allen High School up in the Dallas area had shared a plan that we had considered, uh, which involved multiple stages and students coming in small groups and then putting a video together and, 
and sharing that out. We, we considered that. We considered a, vir a virtual ceremony as well. And then we were considering the outdoor ceremony, which is the closest to our, most, our traditional graduation ceremony. Well, through our conversation with the pavilion, uh, it became evident to us that the social distancing rules uh, was, was going to really limit the capacity of the pavilion. Um, it is a, a beautiful facility. It serves us so well for um, typically our graduations. Uh, we really have enjoyed our time there, and they have worked so hard with us to try to make graduations work for us this year there. But in the end, to meet the governor's rules and the rules that they must abide by as a, as a large concert venue, the, the rules that are placed on them, it became evident to us that if we were to go to the pavilion in June or July, so it wouldn't make any difference if we waited a month, we would have to do half the class. We could not do the full class. We, students would be limited to two or three tickets uh, per, per graduate for their family members. And in order to even make that happen, we would have to seat all the graduates up on the hill. And if you're familiar with the pavilion, you know there are seats at the bottom where we typically would sit our graduates and then we would, and then there's the hill. Uh, we would have had to place the graduates on the hill, meaning they'd been the furthest away from the ceremony. And you as a parent being seated in the pavilion would not have been able to visually put eyes on your child as they sat there. Um, so those were hard limitations for us uh, that we um, weren't ideal. And that caused us to really begin to dig into more options. And so all of our high school principals uh, have been working so hard. They want this so bad for our high school seniors. They began to talk to their student leadership groups. Uh, they began to talk to parent, parent groups as well and receive feedback. What is it that's important to our graduates? What do they want? Well, we got have, we have pretty solid feedback, and it was universal across all of our campuses. And it was, number one, our students were not very interested in a virtual graduation. That, that um, what we heard is that this felt like a video. It did not feel like a graduation. It's not what they wanted. They wanted a in-person graduation. They wanted to walk across the stage and have their name called and in their cap and gown. And they wanted their parents there in the arena to see it happen, which I completely understand and appreciate as a parent. And they wanted more than two tickets because there are many families that may be a blended family. And they felt like four tickets was an absolute minimum that would work for them perhaps to get mom and and stepdad and dad and stepmom into the, into the building or to have an opportunity potentially to bring a sibling or two that may want to be there. So we took those wishes of our graduates and began to look and once again, the pavilion um, option would only provide us two or three tickets and it would push the graduates to the back. And so that, that didn't really work. And so our previous plan B that we had talked about, which was going to the pavilion, um, really kind of came off the table because uh, if we can't get more than two people uh, into the stands, it's not what our graduates have asked for. And we were still gonna ha going to need to divide the class in half. There was no way um, that the pavilion could accommodate an entire class and have parents in the building. So it was just not an option. Uh, so the last piece that we got from our seniors was, we wanna get this done as quickly as possible. Don't drag this out longer than you have to. Um, and there are a variety of reasons for that. We have many, uh, many wonderful children that have made um, a life decision that we all admire to go to the military and uh, be at an academy or, or enlisting in the military. And many of them will be um, shipping out in late June. So um, students were worried that if we waited too long that those students would miss this opportunity. And, and they're making such a sacrifice for us uh, in our country that they didn't, they didn't want them to miss and we didn't either. Um, additionally, we have students that may be traveling back to their home countries or traveling away to a job or to college at some point. And so the faster that we could make this happen, the more we felt like we had a chance to include as many kids as possible that wanted to be a part of this plan. So we, we looked at all of our options and we began to consider Wood Forest Bank Stadium, which is, um, our stadium, it's located in Shenandoah. It's right behind the Portofino Shopping Center. Many of you have probably been there, and some of you may not have been there. Uh, but it is a 
a, a football stadium by nature, uh, but we have some luxuries there at, that would help us meet the requirements of social distancing. And the, the, the most significant one is ample parking. Um, we're going to share a plan with you later that will show you exactly how we'll utilize that. But the stadium provided us an opportunity as we looked at it to bring half of a high school class together and give every graduate four tickets for their family members. We could also ensure social distancing, make sure that safety was a priority, and we could do graduations right at the 1st of June. So we'll share with you now what our current dates and times are for our graduations. And you can see here, we will start on June 1st, which is the earliest allowed date by the state of Texas. And, and why did we want to move so quickly? Well, one of the caveats that uh, we were given multiple times throughout our graduation guidance is that at any point, the state could change the rules. If we see a spike in the number of cases in the state of Texas, then they could come in at any point and say, you are no longer allowed to have a face-to-face -face graduation. Indoors, outdoors, it doesn't matter. All graduations would be canceled. So for us, it seemed to make the most sense to move as quickly as possible uh, into this plan and, and schedule them right away. So you can see uh, June 1st is our first day, Hawk High School, and then Caney Creek at night. We have an 8 a.m. and an 8 p.m. ceremony. Um, the reason for those times is simply the heat. We're in Texas. It's June. Um, we are going to be fighting heat as we're out on the, in the football stadium. Unlike the pavilion, we're not covered, so we're not protected from the elements. It will be hot, so an 8 a.m. start will hopefully allow us to conclude a ceremony uh, prior to it becoming too hot, and then 8 p.m., hopefully we'll begin to cool down, the sun will begin to set uh, as we settle into our nighttime ceremony. So on June uh, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, you can see our largest high schools will have two ceremonies, one at 8 a.m., one at 8 p.m. The campuses will communicate with you exactly how graduates would be divided into those two ceremonies. Now, what we, what we know is that our graduation ceremonies at Wood Forest Bank Stadium is a large endeavor for us. You think about planning a, a dinner party, think about planning a wedding, any of those big events where you may invite a lot of people. Um, it's nice to have six months a year to plan a wedding. Uh, we started this planning process, the decision was made last Friday morning to move our graduations to Wood Forest Bank Stadium. So we are, what we're gonna share with you today, and I have Mr. Colshan, our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education here, and we'll, we'll hear from him later as he shares our specific plans with you. But what you're gonna see is what we've, what we've accomplished in three days to establish this plan. Uh, we are now two and a half weeks roughly away from our first graduation, so we'll see things that may change. But we know we're not gonna be perfect, and we're okay with that because it's worth it for our kids. It was worth it to move as quickly as we could in a safe manner to give our students the best opportunity to have their moment that they sought, to walk across the stage and have their name called. And so we feel like that's really important to move and go quickly. Once again, I, I just want to re-highlight to you, those of you that may be saying, well, why not plan B, why not July? We wanted to all be together. All being together is, was, was never an option after the governor's rules came out last Tuesday. So regardless of if we did it on June 1st or we waited till the middle of July, if we do it at Wood Forest Bank Stadium or we did it at the Pavilion, having all of the class for our biggest schools together was just never going to be an option. And we don't like that. I, I understand the pain that that causes and it's not ideal, but given the option of divide in half or not have a graduation at all, we take the divide in half option, all right? We'll just celebrate with those that we can and we'll have our moment. I'll remind you, all of our graduations are live streamed. So if you're not able to attend because you don't have enough tickets or you just wanna see your friends graduate in the morning and you're in the afternoon, you can watch it on the live stream. Now what I wanna run through just very quickly with you is we're gonna go back to the governor's rules and, and I wanna just share a high level answer to every question so that you can see that 
we are going to answer every question and, and every requirement that the governor has put on us to ensure that this program will be done safely. So we'll go back now to the governor's rules. And once again, we have chosen the outdoor in-person ceremony uh, as our option. And so here are the rules. So you must cap the number of attendees. Well, well we have done that. We, we have made the decision that we have to divide the class in half and we have to limit the number of attendees to four for each graduate. As Mr. Colson later shares with you the map, you are going to see that there is not any additional capacity to add more graduates or add more parents into the stands or families into the stands and still meet this requirement. Um, the screening process, we will send out uh, a questionnaire to you prior to graduation, but there will also be people at the gates at graduation that are going to, to talk to you as you enter and ask you to make sure that you have been screened and that, that it is okay for you to enter. We will not be having um, graduation rehearsals. We'll go straight into graduation. Six feet or more spacing must be kept between all participants. You will see our diagram in a few minutes for the field. All graduates will be spaced out on the field and in the stands. We will be skipping every other row. You will receive four tickets together and then there will be, we will skip four seats between your family and the next family so that you will not have anyone sitting immediately to your left or your right or in front or behind you. We will have assigned seating, so you, you will, it is not going to be general admission, you know, it's not, it's not come in and try to save the best seat. You will be assigned from the campus your assigned seat at graduation. We will have hand sanitizer and hand washing stations throughout, not only just at the entrances, but also on the field for graduates. Uh, we are working now to establish how many um, employees that we need to run a very safe uh, graduation. Our awarding of diplomas will look different. Traditionally, graduates come to the stage, they're handed their diploma by a school board member and have a picture taken with that board member. Um, that exchange will not occur this year. Um, each campus is working on their plan and, and they'll have that plan for you to talk to you about that. But the graduates will have an opportunity to walk across the stage. They will get a picture taken as they cross the stage and they'll get a picture taken, uh, an individual picture taken once they've uh, exited the stage as well. Um, as far as masks go, we will encourage those that are coming to the ceremony to wear a mask if you're gonna be in attendance. We actually are going to provide all of the graduates with masks. There will be school branded uh, cloth masks. And once again, not a requirement to be worn, uh, it's encouraged, but either way that is their mask to keep. Uh, that served two purposes in our eyes. One, the safety of the event, which is really important, but also, uh, what a great keepsake that will be in a memory box one day, hopefully 20 years from now when they're talking to their children and, and their child asks, what in the world is this mask in your box, mom? What, why do you have this? Uh, what a story they will have to tell about the class of 2020. So we will be providing school branded masks. Uh, and we will have staff throughout the stadium to help ensure social distancing. And this is, um, this is really almost a, a, a gamble for all of us with our community. We couldn't do this if we didn't have great trust in our community to honor the social distancing rules. We don't want anybody to attend graduation and get uncomfortable because others around them are not following those rules. So this is a matter of mutual respect and we'll all be working to follow those rules. We must have a robust communication plan. So here we are. Uh, this is our first, our first wave of that communication plan. You'll get much more information and details from the campuses down the road, but you'll, we'll also be producing a video as we get closer to help you know exactly what to understand. And then you have to have a plan for arrival and departure to make sure that we ensure social distancing and we will have that. So um, we feel like we have answered every single one of the questions. And if we could not have done that, if we could not feel like that we could do this safely, we wouldn't do it. And I know there are some out there, I'm just gonna guess that there are some probably out there that think, oh my gosh, um, you're over managing this. Why, we don't need social distancing, we don't need all this. Well, the short answer is we can't have graduation without it, the governor won't allow us, so we have to. Uh, and there are probably some out there that are thinking, I can't believe you're doing this. I don't know that it's safe yet to do this, so how are you gonna keep us safe? We, we respect that too, and so that's, that's why we, 
wanted to go through and show you that we've answered every single one of those questions. And then Mr. Colshan is going to really walk you through our plan. And once again, I just remind you, this is our plan after three days. Uh, it will continue to tweak a little bit before you receive uh, final information from your campus as we get closer um, to graduation. But I wanna turn it over now to, to Mr. Colshan and let him walk you through our plan. Thank you, Dr. Null. Uh, before we get deep into the plan, I want to congratulate the class of 2020. I know that when the school year started, this isn't the way you envisioned it ending, but I want to congratulate you for sticking with it. Uh, and I also want to uh, thank the, all the people who have already contributed to putting this plan together, from the campus principals who have been so instrumental in providing input and feedback to our communications department, our athletic team to make all this possible. So we're gonna start talking about the plan from the inside out. The first thing we considered was what we were gonna do with the graduates. And what you're seeing here is the playing field at Wood Forest Bank Stadium. Each individual dot represents a graduate seat. Each one of those seats is six feet from the next seat, both front, back, and side. Uh, we have 35 rows of 20 seats each with an aisle in the middle. Um, as you can see on the diagram, there are the dots are colored, the seats are colored, and these correspond with the, uh, and we'll see in a minute, how they correspond to your seats in the, in the bleachers and also the area that we're going to ask you to park in. So this is a little bit over, uh, a bigger shot of it. Um, and as you can see uh, on the home side, which is to the bottom of your screen, um, that is the green section, the far section on the left-hand side, and that corresponds with the green seats on the same side for the graduates. The blue section is in the middle, and then the red section is on the far right. And the same thing on the other side. Each one of those seats, and we can go to the, the seating map, each one of those seats are four together with four seats in between. And as Dr. Null mentioned, there'll be a row empty behind you and a row empty in front of you. Um, it's very important that you understand that, that there is no liberty to sit in unassigned seats. This is our requirement so that we can meet the, the rules that the commissioner and the governor have set forth so we can even have graduation. I know the question will come up, what if one family is not going to use all of their four tickets? Well, they can certainly give that ticket to someone else, but that person would not be able to sit with that family group. They would have to sit in the seat that the ticket was assigned to. And much more information will come out from the campuses in the coming days about seating arrangements and, and those things. So we feel very comfortable about this plan that you'll have plenty of space. We will have ushers in every section helping you find your seats, uh, helping to ensure that social distancing is maintained. They will also uh, provide you with a program, a mask and gloved uh, usher will provide you with your program as you come into the stands. And then at the end of the ceremony, they will dismiss you. It'll be much like a wedding where they dismiss the front row first and, and then so on. We will have a plan for dismissal that will uh, keep social distancing as a priority. Um, so that's the uh, home side that you're looking at. Uh, the next slide is a picture of the visitor side. Uh, again, uh, the yellow section is the one closest to the natatorium. The purple section is in the middle and the orange section is on the scoreboard end. Uh, and, and again, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is an overall lookout at, uh, look at uh, the Wood Forest Bank Stadium. The parking areas are color-coded. Yellow, purple, and orange are on the visitor side. Red, blue, and green are on the home side. There'll be signage as you drive into the stadium, stadium indicating uh, which lot you're going to on your ticket. It will be color-coded for the parking area, and that color will also correspond to the section that you're seated in. You will have specific gates that will ask you to enter through. Um, there will be people there, as Dr. Null said, who will, will check your ticket. On the back of your ticket will be the COVID uh, uh, requirements, and the, the gate attendant will ask you if you meet the, the requirements to be in attendance. And as long as you can say yes, then you will be entered in. There'll be stadium personnel there to help you to the seating area. And then as again, as I said, ushers in the stands. Uh, we will have uh, uh, people in, in, in the concourse to help you. There will be bottled water stations in three areas uh, on each side of the stadium. 
so that you don't have to go out of your area to get a, a bottle of water if you're so inclined. Uh, and restrooms are set up the same way. We will have restrooms in each area uh, to minimize as much social contact as possible. Uh, we're really excited about this plan. Um, each student will have the opportunity to go to the stage, cross the stage, get a picture taken with their diploma, and exit the stage and have another picture taken and be, be escorted safely back to their row and seat. Uh, at, as I mentioned at the conclusion of the ceremony, uh, we will ask you to remain seated until your row is dismissed so that we can make sure that everyone gets out safely. Thank you, Mr. Colson. And as you can see, we, we spent a lot of time trying to ensure safety and distancing, not only because it's required from the governor to allow us to have a graduation, but because we want, safety is always our number one priority. Um, Andrew, maybe we can go back to the first slide there of showing the, the field. Um, let's talk a little bit about the field layout and just what you can expect from a ceremony because uh, the ceremonies will look different. We know it's not going to be a normal ceremony. Our, our, as Mr. Colson mentioned, our, our focus based on the feedback from the kids was they wanted to walk across the stage, have their name called, and they wanted their parents in the stands. And so that, you know, we're going to meet that criteria, but we can't do everything if you've had older children graduate, it, it won't look exactly the same. So you can see our layout. Um, once again, there is uh, over six feet between every one of those seats. I know it may look like they're close together, but you, you have to imagine that's an entire football field we're looking at. Um, so the scale here is, is pretty amazing. Uh, but the stage will be down on the, uh, the end where the scoreboard is. We have a large video board there at Wood Forest Bank Stadium. And so uh, many of the speeches, um, student speakers and, and those type of activities will be done via video. Um, there's dual purposes in that. One, it's because all students won't be available um, at, at each of the ceremonies. So we want to make sure that both ceremonies get to hear from the appropriate uh, students as they're selected for their high schools. But we also um, we want to limit the number of people that go to the same podium and, and speak in the same microphone. We're, we're really working to try to keep everyone as safe as possible. So uh, your principal will speak from that podium. And then a lot of the other activities will be done via video. And once again, it's a, it's a, a wonderful uh, instrument that we have there in that screen. Uh, we are also, some of you have probably um, been there for football games. And, and if you're like me and Mr. Colson, uh, one of our first obstacles that we felt like we had to get over was the sound there can sometimes be a challenge. Um, it, it, we want to make sure that you hear your graduate's name when it's called. And so we are working um, to mitigate that problem and bring in a sound system that we feel like will be appropriate and everyone will be able to hear um, as names are called. So that's, that's also been a priority for us. Uh, I see a few questions here and I'll just try to knock through them if I can. Um, much of the details about graduation will come from your campus. You know, typically when um, on a normal year, you would never hear me or Mr. Colson talk about graduation at all. Uh, it's always a, it's a campus-driven um, activity. Well, this year we, we have to provide this basic template to graduation, but then the campuses will take that template and they're going to run with it. And, and it will, each graduation will be their own and it will be driven um, by your high school principal and, and your senior advisors and those that, that work uh, with you throughout the year. So uh, questions like, when, when will tickets be distributed or, or when will caps and gowns be distributed? Those are campus-based questions. We, we won't do that on the district level. They'll make sure to give them to you, uh, certainly in ample time, but th they'll make that available for you. Um, what do we do if it rains? That's a great question. And I will tell you that um, I've, I already look at the weather forecast for that week. I've been watching it since the day we made this decision. I go to it every single day. Um, AccuWeather has a long, a long, long forecast. I go to it every single day, and I'm going to stress and worry about it until it's over. Um, but we do have rain out dates built in. So if, if you were to rain out, we have rain out slots. So on that Saturday morning, June 6th, would be rain out slot one. The evening of Saturday evening, the 8 p.m. would be rain out slot two. Sunday night would be rain out slot three, and then into Monday morning and evening would be rain out slot four or five. If we had to cancel um, one of the events, you would go into the first available rain out slot. Um, 
hopefully we don't have that. And you know, we if we had to adjust the start time a, a little forward or a little back to avoid a storm, we would likely do that. So we ask you to be prepared for flexibility. Uh, you know, if it if we uh, were to see on Wednesday evening that you know there was a storms predicted to come in at ten at ten thirty at night, uh, big storms were going to be there at ten thirty. We we might want to communicate early in the day or the day before to say, listen, we want to start that that next night ceremony at 7:30 instead of eight instead of eight because we want to get we want to make sure we can get it in and get everybody into their car safely before it rains. Those are decisions we're going to have to make. Um, you know, we're just, it's all going to require flexibility because we're not going to know the answers uh, un until we're in the moment. But hopefully 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., you know, our, our normal sum, summer pattern here in southeast Texas is to get that, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock shower in the summer, and then it usually, you know, clears up and it's very nice. Last night was a perfect example of that. Uh, it was very nice by 8 o'clock at night, although it was stormy a little earlier. So hopefully we will we will land in a very positive weather pattern and let's just all be very hopeful of that. Um, will bleacher seats be allowed? Um, yes, they'll be allowed. Um, certainly we want to try to respect our, our social distancing. You don't want to bring maybe the, you know, some of the largest seats that would actually take up more than one spot. But yes, I'm, we know um, very well that the, uh, those bleachers are, are tough and uh, some people physically just may not be able to do that. Uh, do attendees have to wear a mask? No, you're not going to be required to wear a mask. It's recommended. It's recommended by the governor that you do, but we will not be requiring that of you uh, as you enter the stadium, uh, nor will we be requiring that of the graduates. Certainly, I think as a parent, that's a conversation you will have with your, your graduate as to what your expectations are as a parent. Uh, but they all will receive a mask. Even if they choose not to wear it, they will still receive one. Uh, from their high school. Uh, Mr. Colson, they, um, what about throwing their hats at the end of the ceremony? Um, that's kind of a tradition at many of the high schools. The thing I would caution you on, if you do throw your hat, the odds of you getting that same hat back aren't very good. Um, in touching someone else's hat could be, could be an issue with the social distancing aspect of uh, what we're looking at here. So, Again, I think that's a, a personal decision. We would not necessarily encourage it. Uh, just know that you're probably not going to get the same hat back. Yeah. Uh, overall, I think I think it's. Uh, I wouldn't encourage it. I think you know we're we're going to do all this work to try to be distant and to throw a hat and then go pick up a different hat that has been handled by uh, someone else. It's probably not a great idea. Um, so that, that's just something to take take into account. Uh, great question came in here. What about family members that may uh, have physical disabilities and are unable to climb stairs? The uh, stadium is uh, very accessible, and so that's a good thing. We will, uh, all of our high schools will have some seating available in the handicap uh, section. So what I would encourage you to do between now and graduation is if you know within your group of four people that are going to attend that you're going to have someone that's, that's going to have a struggle with climbing the stairs, Communicate that ahead of time with your with your high school, and they may be able to go ahead and, and have you seated in one of those accessible sections, um, rather than you receive tickets in an area that won't work, and then they try to make a, a change with you in the future. So um, I think the more proactive we can be, right, Mr. Colson, yes. I think that's a positive thing uh, with that. Um, let's see. Uh, will these graphics be available online? They will be as we approach closer to the ceremony, absolutely. Uh, once again, we're three days in on the planning. We feel um, very good with where we are with this plan. And we're so thankful to our communications team for uh, getting these graphics together. It's one of the reasons we chose to wait till tonight to have this Facebook Live rather than do it earlier in the week. We wanted to have some level of detail to share with you, um, but it, they may change a little bit. So once we know that they're locked in, they will go up on our graduation central website via the district, but really what you're going to see, and it started last week, you're going, you're going to see your campus begin to really ramp up their direct communication with you about graduation, and they will also be providing all of this information to you. Um, what about families with six people? Who should we talk to about being together? Um, unfortunately, it's just not going to be an option. Every graduate's going to receive four tickets, and 
Um, you'll only be able to seat together uh, as a group of four, as Mr. Colshan mentioned. Uh, if you were able to receive extra tickets from another graduate, you would still need to sit in those assigned seats. So there will not be any uh, place available in the stadium where six people can sit together. Uh, it's, we, we just can't do that and meet the social distancing guidelines and get four people into the, the stadium for everybody. So um, we understand that's a hardship. Once again, we do have the online option for, for you to go in and watch that online. Um, Mr. Colson, I know we've discussed this question. Um, but I don't know the, the, if we have the answer yet. Um, are graduates going to be allowed to, to decorate their, their graduation hats? We're having conversations with the high school principals right now uh, about that, and that's on the agenda for our 7.30 Zoom meeting in the morning. Okay. And uh, you may or may not know, traditionally, we do not allow that in Conroe ISD. Um, it's just not something that we've done. It's kind of been a um, – there are certain privileges that are – you know, use later for college, and that's just been one of those. Um, but we we are entertaining that conversation this year because it's everything's different. <laughs> so um, that'll ultimately it will be up to our high school principals. And and uh, but we've I've had a few students email me asking that question. I think it's a great question. And as Mr. Colson said, they'll talk about it tomorrow um, in their 7:30 a.m. meeting. What about small children who can fit in laps? So preschool age children um, that are small enough to fit into someone's lap will not require a ticket. So if you have a toddler that can come in and, and be seated in your lap, then they won't require a ticket. Is that accurate, Mr. Colson? Anything further? Okay. That's correct. Um, let's see. This is a big one. You know, a question came in. Well, well, can we get together with our friends and take group pictures after the ceremony? No. And this is, this, is, this is one of those deals where we're all counting on each other here because if we do that, we're going to be violating the governor's orders, and that will put us in danger of not being able to have all of our graduations for the whole week if we can't ensure that we can have social distancing. I, I know you all want to get together and take that picture with your friends, but we just have to understand that it's not, it's not allowed under the rules. So... Once you leave the stadium and you get in your car and you drive off from the stadium, that's completely your family decision, what you do. You know, so if you end up somewhere else and y'all take pictures, that is your decision. It's our responsibility uh, as a school district and, and to the state that on our grounds that we don't allow you to congregate and have groups like that. So you know, we're going to be trying to, to manage that in the building and we're going to have you leaving by row and, and not grouping up. So you just, you have to understand it. I'm sure at some point you're going to look at us and think, I can't, you know, this is overkill. I can't believe you're doing it. And that's why I would just refer you back to the governor's rules. Without, without our ability to, you know, and we have to send this plan to the state before we can do it, is without our ability to guarantee that those things won't happen, the state won't let us have graduation. So um, we, we just have to do it, okay? Um, Will the school board be used to show the ceremony? Absolutely. It's a wonderful school board. Um, we will have cameras on. Um, our, when the principal is up speaking, we will have a camera on the speaker. Uh, on, the, on the principal, we will also have a camera that will be on our uh, sign language interpreter during that time. And then when we reach that point where we are having graduates walk across the stage, we will have a live um, camera view of the graduates walking across the stage as well. So it should make for a, a great photo opportunity. Uh, the the uh, scoreboard is huge, so you'll hopefully get a, a nice view of your graduate as they cross the stage. Um, all right, I think that wraps up. Mr. Coach, anything else for graduation that, that you would hit? No, we're just really excited about the opportunity to provide this experience for our seniors. Yeah, it's great. And I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Colson, all of our high school principals, our communications team, maintenance staff, athletic staff, you name it. Um, we've really deployed every resource in Conroe ISD and dedicated pretty much 100% of their time and then some over these next three weeks to make sure that we have a great graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. Once again, we know it won't be perfect. We wish we could have you all together. It's just not an option, even if we wait longer. So this is the best plan we could get to give you your moment and, and allow you to enjoy this and your parents to be a part of it. So um, we'll all make the best of it. 
and, and we know that uh, we have great faith in our high schools that they will put on a wonderful show at graduation. So we do look forward to it. More information will be coming directly from your high schools and then more uh, videos to come as well as we will um, help you know exactly what to expect when we go to graduation. Well, as we uh, wrap up that graduation talk, we can start to think about next year. And you've probably seen some information come out in the media about TEA talking about next year. It's always interesting to see um, the information that's shared from TEA and then what becomes a speaking point in the media and becomes a, um, something that we talk a lot about. And the TEA uh, has talked to us about calendars and they've given us many options and, and many considerations uh, for us to think about. Our calendar is a local decision. It is set by your school board and they have already set our calendar for next year. Um, but TEA has said, hey, be ready because we, we may miss school days next year. So here's what I can tell you now about next year's calendar. We have no plans to change the first day of school for next year. So that day is set. We don't have any plans to change it. What I think we all have to be ready for is to be flexible. You know, if we were to miss a few weeks next year, I don't believe the state will just allow us to not make them up like they are doing this year. So uh, we have to be prepared, but we know what our first day will be and we, we have our plan. But we're not going to change the plan unless it becomes necessary to change the plan. If, if you know, we do have to miss days, we might have to add on days at the end of next school year. Or we may have to adjust some of our holiday times throughout the school year. But we're not going to make that decision before it's time to make that decision. Um, so our plan right now is we're going to start school just as it's scheduled to start in August. And we will attack next school year for exactly what it is when that time comes. Now, What's next school year going to look like? That's a whole nother level of question that we really can't answer yet because we are waiting for guidance from TEA. And I know they're working as fast as they can to help get us that guidance, but I would remind you that we just got graduation guidance last week and we have graduations in two weeks. So we are months away from the start of school. So I don't anticipate TEA giving us hard and fast information about next year until later, deep into June or July. I just think that's what we'll be waiting for. What I do expect is um, there to be some options next year. You know, perhaps the online option will be available even if we do come back to school. Parents could opt out and take the online option. Uh, when we do come back to school, we will work for social distancing and, and do the things that we need to do. You, once again, you've seen how we are game planning for graduation. We are already in all those same conversations, game planning for next school year. So, um, you know, what will that look like? We, we just have to wait till we get more information and we'll share it as soon as we know, but know that we're working on it. We're, we're trying right now to get all those things answered um, so that when we do get information from the state, we're ready to, to be agile and, and adjust our plans however are needed. So uh, we'll continue to work, about, work on that. Um, had a question here about reducing curriculum requirements for students as the year wraps up. So, um, you know, the, the curriculum is set by the state. We make some adjustments. So we are, we've made a lot of adjustments since spring break, to be honest with you. Um, online learning has been um, at a slower speed this year than it would be, for instance, next year. So if you are sitting at home today and you're thinking, hey, this online learning has been great. I think if it's an option next year, I'm going to take it. That, that may be wonderful. We just have to know that um, the online option next year will be much more robust and uh, more prescribed, which I know many of you, um, you really have an appetite for that. That's what you want. And you would likely see that, especially if it's optional. If we're running a parallel uh, online system as well as an in-school system, you know, the, the online system is going to look much more like the in person, meaning the, the number of assignments, the level of testing, grading requirements, all of that. So, um, but we have teams working on all that right now. We have teams working on curriculum, knowing that we missed a lot this last nine weeks. They are building in those, those really important missed items from this year. They're building them into the next year's curriculum on the next grade level. So if you had a fifth grader this year, we know what they've missed at the end of this fifth grade year, and we will be uh, working that into next year's curriculum uh, to make sure that um, you know we get them caught up, and so for the for the long haul of their educational career, we have them prepared and ready. So, um, 
Well, I think that wraps up. I think I've hit all of the questions tonight. Thank you for staying with us. I know it was a lot of graduation talk, but that's important. Uh, as Mr. Colson said, we're so proud of the class of 2020. This is not at all what they signed up for. This is not the plan that they had, and we recognize that, seniors. Uh, we thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, know that you are, you are the priority, and there's not a question you've been since this has started. I hope you have known that since we started talking to you right after spring break. But, but I'll go back and tell you once again, every resource in Conroe ISD is deployed right now for you, class of 2020, so that we can make that graduation happen for you. And it is so worth it. And we look forward um, to those mornings and those nights and celebrating you. Um, as a superintendent, I, I get the honor at graduations of shaking every graduate's hand as they cross the stage. Well, I, I won't get to do that this year. I'm going to miss that. Uh, but I will be standing on that stage, and I will offer my congratulations to you verbally six feet away from you. Uh, but, but I'm going to offer those congratulations, and I can't wait to see you in those caps and gowns walking across that stage and having that moment in your life. Uh, it, it is special, and we want to make it special for you. So we so look forward to that. More information to come on graduations. Enjoy these last two weeks of the school year. Thank you to all our campuses and teachers for the work you're doing. Uh, we appreciate you as well. I wish you all a very safe evening. Thank you.